So looking at an example of that, and this is another clinical trial, I'm afraid, but it, the same would apply to animal trials or any other trial where you're interested in looking at the actual relationship over time. So here there were a set of haemophiliacs that were infected with HIV, and there are different treatments being compared to forms of this factor VIII treatment. And the outcome is there was a CD4 count assessed at different time points. So the model we'll consider will fit treatment time and the interaction as fixed effects and we'll also model random slopes for the individual patients. So this is, was a SAS output for the fixed effects. This time row gives the actual estimate of the slope and its standard error. It's not the overall slope, it's actually the slope for the reference category, which here is treatment 2, where you've got estimates of naught. So that's the slope for treatment 2 and its standard error. And then the interaction shows, well, we've got a non-significant interaction. That's the interaction between the slope and treatment, which says there's no difference in the slopes for the two treatments. And if we want to get um, an estimate of the slope for treatment 1, then we have to add on this 0.0158 term here. Sorry, I haven't actually recalculated that. You need to, there's a mistake there. I need to add on this, this value here to get the slope for treatment 1. So that's the sort of output you would get in any package fitting a random coefficients model. And by fitting the interaction, you can see if the slopes are different between your groups also get the overall slope. Whatever package you use you'll probably get estimates of how what the variability is between the slopes. This is very unhelpful as in the SAS output it doesn't label it very well at all but basically this third bit here is the slope variance component. So we've got positive variation between the slopes so it's saying there's more variation than you'd expect just by chance between the patients, their slopes are genuinely varying, it's not just chance variation. This is the variation in the intercepts, and then, as I said, you have to correlate your intercepts and your slopes in any regression model, so that's the covariance coming in there. And you've got the overall residual variance component, which is the variability of individual observations around the slopes. Sometimes you'll find this variance component is going to be zero for the slopes and that would say there's no variability in the slopes other than what you might expect by chance. But here we have got some and it's important to take that into account. That was a very quick example on random coefficients models just to show that you can actually model the relationship with time and take into account the repeated measurements. You could also model it as, um, it doesn't have to be a linear effect, you could have a curve or something else as an alternative.